his research is in programming languages, uh, including uh, type systems for security properties and uh, semantics. And in this talk, we'll hear about how to perform formal verification uh, of differential privacy in uh, Bayesian programming. <coughs> Uh, good morning. Um, this is joint work with um, uh, Jill, um, Marco, who are in the audience, and Justin, uh, who is also uh, uh, has also just given us a talk on uh, probabilistic couplings, and uh, a bunch of other people who I believe. Uh, are in the audience, or I'm not really sure about that. Anyway, um, uh, okay. So uh, we all know that uh, machine learning nowadays is um, um, affecting a lot of, um, is having a lot of applications in many areas of, um, of everyday life. For instance, it's been applied to self-driving cars or uh, uh, even in healthcare, in um, fight against cancer, for instance. Um, in recommendation system is another area where uh, machine learning is uh, finding um, a lot of applications. Um, but not only machine learning is finding applications, it's also um, uh, changing uh, the point of view of um, some areas of research. For instance, uh, in particular, the Bayesian approach to machine learning is, um, is a change, has changed the, uh, the point of view in uh, programming, for instance, uh, in this, uh, um, in this uh, approach to programming called Bayesian programming, um, on which we have um, primitives in the language. Uh, that internalize inference uh, that is implemented at the compiler level, and there are constructs uh, also for um, definition of statistical models in um, Bayesian programming, which is also called um, probabilistic programming in other communities. Um, of course, uh, one of the reasons why machine learning is having a lot of success nowadays is because there is a huge amount of available data which um, makes it possible for algorithms uh, to train and then to generalize. But of course, we know that this comes uh, with a price, uh, the, price uh, the price of, uh, of privacy. Uh, for instance, a few years uh, back, Netflix released a bunch of its data uh, which was supposedly um, uh, anonymized so that machine learning researchers could uh, improve its uh, recommendation system. Of course, a few uh, months ago, uh, the privacy of uh, this uh, data set was broken because a few researchers were able to uh, cross-reference um, the data of, of Netflix with the data of IMDb. Uh, which is uh, which is uh, non-anonymous and, and public, and so the um, the privacy of a few users in the Netflix database was broken. But we all know this, and uh, we all know that there are solutions for uh, these problems. One of these is, of course, uh, differential privacy, and um, and. Um, the intersection between these two areas has played uh, the role of a, uh, of a very nice playground for the formal um, verification community. Um, that in particular um, provided tools and is still providing tools such as logics or type systems or programming languages specifically for uh, the verification uh, and so of um, differential privacy and uh, so that, for instance, machine learning um, people um, can be assured that the algorithms are indeed uh, differential private, their programs are indeed differentially private. But there is a problem. The problem is that all the solutions provided so far uh, don't handle uh, Bayesian programming. So we propose um, PrimInfer, which is a type-based verification uh, framework for specifically this setting, um, differentially private Bayesian programming. But let's step back a little bit and let's talk about what Bayesian, pro Bayesian programming is. Um, let's say I'm asked. Uh, I would like to start from uh, mm, uh, the hello world of, uh, of statistics, the Beta Bernoulli example. Let's say we are, uh, I'm a statistician and I'm interested in the distribution of uh, the people that wear glasses in um, in some area, let's say this very this very room, and I might have some belief about this, uh, uh, some initial belief about um, the probability of uh, of this uh, random variable. Uh, and uh, let's say I don't have any strong belief, so I choose uh, the flat uh, prior over the initial over the unit interval. But then I start I start observing. 
I start observing data, and uh, and my my um, my belief gets updated in what is called posterior distribution. Um, of course, I might have started from a very different initial belief, and um, the same data would have had a very different um, effect on my posterior uh, belief. So. Mathematically, this is justified by the so-called Bayes rule, which allows us to uh, link a prior distribution over some uh, parameter, theta, um, to the posterior distribution uh, over the same parameter uh, given the observed data through uh, the model, also called likelihood, that um, tells us how the data um, is generated given the, given the parameter. Uh, let's just notice, and this is a bit important, that on the left-hand side we have, a, as a mathematical object, we have a distribution over, over theta. So this equation is of such a paramount importance that, um, that uh, rivers of ink have been, um, have been uh, used and spelled over um, research papers that are about uh, making this inference efficient. And, uh, and also, um, this, um, this equation uh, is um, at the heart of Bayesian programming, which now has constructs for um, inference um, inside the uh, internalized in the language, and also construct to uh, build statistical models. On the right uh, of this um, of this slide, we can see a few programming languages which internalize these uh, constructs, and uh, we can roughly distinguish them in two classes. Basically, those that have uh, an inference um, algorithm that is uh, symbolic, so namely the result of the inference algorithm is um, uh, a symbolic representation of the posterior distribution, or um, the other class, uh, the one in black, that um, outputs whose inference algorithm algorithm outputs samples from the posterior distributions. Well, Preminfer only focuses on the symbolic uh, inference algorithms, and. Um, and, and let's see here how, uh, what's the typical work of, workflow of a Bayesian programmer. He usually defines um, on some, uh, defines some model and where he can define some prior and then using the observed constructs, it tells how uh, to update the prior given the data. Then the data and the model, and the model give, uh, are fed in input to the infer construct that then outputs a symbolic posterior distribution that can also be used uh, can also be turned into an actual uh, posterior distribution of, from which we can actually sample. Um, so I've talked about uh, what, what Bayesian programming is. Let's, uh, uh, let's recap very quickly what differential privacy is. Um, I know we have given, we, are, we have gone to the definition of differential privacy uh, a few times now, but uh, I will just go quickly uh, through it uh, again. So we have a query, uh, we, uh, and, we want, and we say that it's epsilon differentially private. Uh, I will only consider the vanilla definition for now, just without loss of any generality. Um, for for this talk, um, if we have, uh, I was saying we have a query that is epsilon differentially private. If we have um, that for every uh, pair of databases, the A and the B, which are adjacent, and for every uh, for every event, we have that the probability of getting this event when we feed the algorithm with the first database is at most one is at most e to the epsilon times the probability of getting the same event uh, when we feed the query with the with the second database. Um, a few things. Um, let's first notice that this is a um, probabilistic query, so we can think of it as um, outputting a probability distribution. And let's also notice that we can rewrite the, um, that inequality uh, by using um, this logarithm of, uh, of probability ratios, um, which has to be bounded if you want the query to be epsilon differentially private. So we are talking about two runs of the same uh, program uh, on which we relate two uh, inputs and uh, we relate the respective outputs. So in particular, differential privacy is a relational property of a program. 
So we have a query. Uh, we feed it with, a, with an algorithm. So this is just a graphical way to see it. We have two worlds. And in the first world, we feed the algorithm with an, a database. We get a, a distribution in output. Then we do the same with an adjacent uh, database. And we get a different distribution such that for every event, maybe the bad event that the privacy of Bob is slicked. Uh, the, the ratio of probability between these two uh, distribution, the, the two distribution assigns to this bad event, is bounded by e to the epsilon. Um, but this was just the definition of differential privacy. How, how do we achieve it? Um, let's say we, there are many ways. One of one is the following: we we have a deterministic query Q. And then we add some statistical noise. We perturb the output of this query. But the real question is, how much noise? Uh, we don't want to add too much, because we would lose uh, all the information signal. But we don't want to add too little, because uh, we want still to protect uh, our users. Um, so it turns out that the noise has to depend on the epsilon parameter, but it also has to depend on something else, the so-called uh, sensitivity of, of the query. The sensitivity is um, is a measure how much of how much a query can magnify the distance uh, between two um, adjacent um, inputs. So I talked about distance. So this means that uh, uh, there is a metric underlying the the set where you know, V and V prime uh, belong. So it, it can be a numeric, uh, a numeric uh, metric, like L1 norm or L2 norm. Or, but, but it's not the only possible choice, as we will see later, in particular if, the, uh, if in output we have a probability, we might think of using uh, probability measures distances. But we will see that later. So this is just a way to uh, achieve differential privacy. We can just uh, use the exponential mechanism, which just, which just draws at random from um, a distribution which assigns exponentially more probability mass to values closer to the real answer of the query, where um, closeness is measured by uh, the so-called scoring function. We are going to need this later. So I talked about differential privacy, and I talked about Bayesian programs. How do we uh, verify them? Um, so we do that with pre-infer, uh, which, um, which is based on a type system called R square. But and so it uses a relational refinement type system, but um, it cannot handle Bayesian inference. So uh, we do this in pre-infer. And there were two major challenges. One of these is how to deal with symbolic inference. And we dealt uh, by introducing uh, two uh, types, the types of the actual distributions, uh, which um, uh, incorporates the uh, approximate um, couplings that Justin was, uh, that internalize in the language the approximate couplings that Justin was uh, just talking about before. And then we have the symbolic distribution types um, that represent the output of an inference algorithm. And then there is um, this other challenge that now the output of an inference query is a probability distribution which is symbolic, so it, it is represented by, uh, by, by, um, by, by its parameters and uh, by its PDF, but it's a probability distribution. So now the output of our query is a probability distribution, and there is the, the, the issue of computing the, um, the sensitivity of this query. Now, we might think of computing the, the um, the sensitivity to respect to some metric over the parameters, over the numeric parameters that represent the distribution, uh, like L1 norm or L2 norm. But this is not the way that um, statisticians usually think when they want to compute the distance between two probability distributions. What they usually do is to use um, common probability measure metrics. For instance, total variation distance that is um, intuitively just says, um, what's the maximum difference that uh, two probability probability distribution can assign to the, to the same event. Or Ellinger distance or KL divergence that intuitively tells us how much uh, do we lose in information when we use one dis uh, distribution instead of, of the other. And the point is that all these uh, probability measure metrics used in the machine learning and in statistics, not all of them, but most of them, 
uh, as I was saying, that, that are used in, uh, in literature, in machine learning and uh, statistics, are instances of a, of a very rich class of um, probability measure metrics called f-divergences, for which um, very nice composition and theorem holds, and uh, uh, composition theorems all and also data processing inequality holds, for instance, and it turns out that also epsilon delta differential privacy can also be captured by uh, an F divergence um, by using a specific metric. Uh, so Previnfer is a relational refinement type system that um, um, of course has primitives for standard probability distributions and uh, for basic um, privacy mechanisms, um, but uh, can also handle the distinction between symbolic and actual distributions and has a probability polymonad to capture uh, f-divergences um, and so to represent uh, actual uh, distributions. Uh, so I won't go too much into the um, typing rules. Uh, we'll just present uh, a few examples of types in these uh, type systems, just to give you an intuition of what we can do here. So as I was saying before, um, um, differential privacy is um, a relational property, so, and uh, Primifer has a relational typing system. This means that uh, types are relational, and this means that uh, values of these types have two instances that we can, uh, that I will call left or right, or one or two. So for instance, this is a type expressible in Primifer, the type of uh, relational integers such that the first component is equal to one plus the second. Um, this is a bit more complex uh, uh, rational types, but uh, it just in, uh, internalizes the approximate uh, coupling uh, that um, we have heard even before, where uh, the distances between, um, where the last uh, um, point uh, of, the, of the definition of before is more general, in the sense that the distance is not the epsilon delta distance, but is a generic F divergence. So now in the two runs, the probability distributions can be related by a generic F divergence and not necessarily by um, epsilon uh, delta uh, distance. This is instead a, a, a symbolic uh, a distribution type such that uh, the first component over integers such uh, that the first component plus the second is equal to one. So I've talked about actual distribution the, uh, and the symbolic distribution and we have a typing rule that allows us to go from the from the from the actual distribution to the second one. So in particular, uh, we have an actual distribution, uh, and then we apply uh, the infer algorithm to it, and uh, and the typing rule tells us that the distances between the two runs uh, in, of the actual distribution does does not increase when we uh, when we uh, apply the inference algorithm to both of them. Um, this is instead um, the typing rule that allows us to actually do, uh, to actually um, update our prior in our model. So we have our prior distribution in the, in, that in the two runs are related by uh, the bound uh, delta, which uh, is again a bound on the, F, on the generic F divergence. And then we have um, a posterior, and the, and, the, and the bound on the posteriors is, uh, is given by um, the bound that we can prove uh, before using uh, the F divergence on the actual posterior distributions. Uh, so this is another type. It's the type of, um, uh, of uh, differentially private, epsilon differentially private um, uh, counting uh, queries over a Boolean list. So, uh, and, and why this is important? This is important because uh, we, we're gonna see an example later, but it basically says that we have a, a, a database of um, Boolean values and we compute something on it, uh, some integers, um, and, and the result is going to be uh, differentially private. Where can we use this type? Let's see an example. I will use the, the example of before of the Beta Bernoulli model. We have a prior distribution and we observe some data and we get in output some posterior distribution. Um, we can encode this in premium fair without any differential privacy for now by just defining this function 
that takes in input uh, some uh, list of booleans and it outputs and a prior distribution and it outputs a symbolic uh, posterior distribution and by just um, uh, updating recursively uh, the prior distribution uh, with respect to the head of the list of the of the observations and then we uh, infer over this model and, and the result is going to be again a, a symbolic distribution uh, but we might want to do this in a differentially private way using uh, the exponential mechanism where the scoring function is uh, computed with respect to an, um, a statistical, uh, a statistical uh, distance over probability measures. Let's say the Ellinger distance. Um, so the score function, uh, so the model is just the same, we learn as before, uh, but the score function is defined with respect to the Ellinger distance. Uh, so the, the, um, the closer, uh, with respect to the Ellinger distance, uh, the posterior is uh, to the actual uh, inferred distribution, the higher the score is going to be. And so we are just gonna add, uh, we are just gonna add noise to our output uh, using the exponential mechanism. So this was a very simple example of uh, what can be uh, done in uh, premium fair, but in the paper, there are uh, more complicated examples like uh, um, uh, learning of Gaussians uh, or uh, uh, the uh, generalization to multinomial, for instance. So I will, uh, the point is that this, that this function can be typed uh, in, um, in premium fair uh, with this very complicated type, but let's just focus on, on the red part. We just say that we take a, a list of booleans, um, we take a prior which is uh, the same in the same uh, in, the, in both runs, where same is measured using the Ellinger distance, and then we get in output um, differentially private computation over symbolic uh, distributions that are our posterior distributions, where. Uh, where the sensitivity is uh, computed with respect to the Hellinger, Hellinger uh, metric. So in particular, that raw in the slide is a bound on, the, on how much um, two posteriors can differ uh, when, we, uh, when we start from two adjacent uh, list of booleans uh, with respect to the Hellinger metric. So uh, to sum up, uh, we know that uh, differential privacy and uh, Bayesian machine learning are very hot topic now, um, and premium fair captures um, exactly um, differentially private Bayesian computations, but allows us to use different different metrics uh, to compute sensitivity, not only metrics based on um, on numeric on numer on numbers. And um, it also allows us to distinguish between symbolic and actual distributions uh, to handle symbolic inference. So with this, I conclude. Uh, I thank you all for your uh, time, and I'll take questions if there is any. Questions for Jim? Hello. Oh. Hi, my name is Chandra, and I'm from University of Washington, Seattle. So my question is, how do you define inference for uh, priv infer? So, like, is it any algorithm that determines the posterior distribution given a prior? So we we uh, are totally um, uh, abstract with respect to this. In particular, priv infer is uh, basically a type system that can be applied to uh, languages that have a symbolic inference algorithm. But uh, we are not assuming. We are very general on that. We 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 don't. In particular, we don't have an algorithm that does inference, uh, symbolic inference. We just, uh, uh, just built on top of it, and we give a language that allows us to, uh, and a type system that allows us to verify differential privacy in those uh, situations. Okay, cool, thank you. Okay, great talk. Uh, can you give more exp explanation on how to achieve differential privacy with special uh, computations? With, with what, sorry? Uh, the uh, more, expa e more explanation on how to achieve differential privacy with Bayesian computations, the technical challenges in uh, So um, the practical challenges are um, that 
so for instance, I presented exponential mechanism before. So in particular, um, it would be, I mean, it's not that uh, easy to sample from, for instance, the exponential mechanism from distribution from all the possi possible posteriors. Um, but this type system uh, can, of course, uh, type check uh, a solution that, that does that. Um, another uh, another uh, way to, this is not the only way to achieve differential privacy by sampling from the exponential mechanism. There is, there is work that, uh, um, that allows uh, to achieve differential privacy by just sampling from, uh, up, um, from the posterior distributions, but that works only in, um, not in, in all the cases. The, the prior and the posterior, ha and the likelihood in particular, have to have specific uh, properties. So another possibility could be to uh, add noise to the input. Uh, so we perturb the input, and then by post-processing, we are, um, we are uh, differentially private, and we can type check uh, that here as well. But it's not, uh, it was not very interesting, so I, I didn't present that. Uh, Thank you. Should I have a final question for you? Uh, thinking about the system from the perspective of a programmer, uh, so could you talk about uh, the costs involved from the programmer perspective, especially in terms of any manual uh, efforts or steps? So yeah, I th um, the, the typical workflow would be that uh, a programmer would uh, write his program, and then it would up um, uh, it would up types uh, so that. Um, he could type check his programs, and that could uh, improve his um, belief on uh, on the actual differential privacy of his algorithm. And then the, these um, typing annotations are discharged by uh, two um, theorem provers uh, that um, might do the proofs for him if there are some uh, uh, some. But that might not be so easy. Sometimes you might want to uh, use some other techniques like uh, using um, proof assistance, like the theorem provers are not able to discharge all the proof conditions of, that were created by um, the typing systems. And, uh, and so you have to uh, make your hand dirty and use, uh, uh, for instance, a, a proof assistant or, yeah. Yeah, thanks, Jan. Uh, this brings us to a conclusion of our session on differential privacy. Let's have a round of applause for all of our speakers today.